Right, building the turbo sound line arrays. Boxing these suckers. So normally we'll do five hangs per side, uh, but today we're just gonna do three for demonstration purposes. They come nicely in a box like this. Um, they're all adjusted to be completely flat, which is not how we'll want it for the show. Um, depending on which ballroom you're in, there's a book upstairs that tells you what angles to put these guys at. Um, and they're already calculated for the room, so we can get kind of the best coverage in the room. Uh, for today, we're gonna get them hooked up to the chain fall first, then we'll adjust the angles, and then we'll power these suckers up. Uh, so let's get the T-bar attached. Use two people for the T-bar. So it's got two notches on the side. The suckers will slide right down on the top. And then there is a pin in the side. That'll pop out. And we'll lock in place right there, make sure it's secure. And same thing on the other side. Cool, once we get that set up, we want to pin the back in place. Um, the book will tell you what angle to put this at. We're just going to set it flat for now. Cool. Always double check your pins are nice and secure. Those are the things holding it all together and lives are depending on it. Cool. So once we have that pinned up, we're going to clip the chain fall on. Boom. These will be living up in the ceiling or one of the managers will have uh, put them up in the ceiling for you. So you guys don't have to worry about rigging any of that. All right, this is secure. Make sure this is tight. Before we raise the thing up, we wanna go through, we wanna make sure that all of these pins are securely in there, because that's what's holding the whole structure together. Check all the pins in the side too, make sure those are all securely in there, because all the weight hangs on those. And people will die if they're not secure. Uh, cool, so once they're all checked, everything's good. We just pull on the chain, and that'll raise the sucker up. And once we have just a little bit of tension, like that, we'll stop, and now we can adjust these pins without worrying about crushing our fingers because the chain's taking all the weight. Uh, so you wanna use two people, you have one person do the chain, and one person do the pins. Um, so go ahead and bring it down a bit. Cool, so that's holding all the weight of this thing so it doesn't just collapse down. Um, yeah, go ahead and lower it down. Cool, it's a little tricky. All right, go ahead and raise it up. Cool, drop it down, we'll go pretty extreme with this angle. So again, normally we'll do five of these per side, four to five. We're just doing three today for demonstration purposes. Um, but normally for the other two, you'll actually unbox another case like this, unstack these and just sit them on top before you hook this sucker on. It's kind of the of operations. All right, so now that we got all the pins are secure, this is secure, that's ready to rock. Now we just raise it up and it'll come right out of the box. You kind of want to pay attention because it's going to swing a little bit once it gets free in the air. Cool. So now that it's up in the air, uh, we can put two boxes per circuit. So that means that we can link them together for power. So what I'm going to do is you get Qbert, which is the square box that lives in the cage. That's got all the stuff for these and the subs. You know, hook this up, it's called the PowerCon cable. It's sort of like our Speakon cables, but it's for power. It's got different notches in it, so you can't accidentally plug it into a speaker input. That sucker just goes in. Boom, twist it. And then we'll sit a doghouse on the top of the stack. We'll tape it in place after we run the cable to it. And that's where all our stuff will plug in. Cool, 
So we got one box plugged in. Then we're gonna daisy chain power. It's one of these, they're color coded so you can't mess it up. So we're gonna link out of here. Oh, it even says it right there, two units max. And that's gonna plug in here. So now those are receiving the same circuit for power. And then the last guy. Then if you had six more box or three more boxes, if we're doing six per side, you'd link that to the next one, and then the other two would take the next circuit. So we're gonna have our main signal. I usually like to go in the, the top one. So it'll come in, that's where it's gonna come out of your board. Um, and then after that, we'll just link these all together, unless you wanna do individual control, but normally we'll just link them all together. So audio signal in, pops out, goes into the next one. And then same, thing for the second verse. Same as the first verse. Cool. So we got power, we got signal. Uh, we can also hook up network cables. We have software that we can monitor the speakers. Um, usually I'll only set that up for the subs because those are the only things we really push to their max just to make sure that you're not clipping. Um, and you can also send like EQ information and stuff to these boxes if you want. Um, but we typically will just leave them on preset number one. They have a built-in processor with some good with a preset in there. Preset number one sounds good. We usually just always leave it on that. All right. So after we got all the little stuff patched in, we're gonna plug in the big power, which is a 12.5 cable. But first, we're gonna tape this box in place. The doghouse, which is probably hard to see on the camera. pieces of tape so it doesn't go anywhere so now we got to get 12.5 to it so we like to run it over the top of this for stress relief and then I'll do one wrap around so that way the weight of the cable hanging off isn't pulling directly on the box it's gonna pull on this piece of cable hanging off of the t-bar so there's no stress on the doghouse here Put it in, twist it, boom, we got power. Uh, we don't have the power hooked up, but the next step would be to fire these on. Switching them down is gonna turn them on. Um, it's always good to send signal to them too, make sure that they work before you raise them up in the air, because if you get them up there and they don't work, you gotta bring them down and figure out what's up. It's better to test them on the ground. Um, and to do that, we'll also run the main XLR that'll come out of your snake head. We'll do the same thing with the strain relief up over the top. Cool, so that's our main input. Goes in the top one. And then we're ready to daisy chain them down, so it'll just pass all the way through. Signal, power, line arrays. So the one thing I didn't really explain um, is for angles, when you're looking up the angles to set where the boxes should point, you just have to follow this diagram of where you put the pins. And it's got this side, which shows you where the pins go in the actual speaker. And it's got this side to show where the pin goes in the actual, um, whatever this is called. What would you call that? Bar? The bar, sure. <laughs> this thing that's removable. So you just follow that grid and it shows you the angle that you get depending on where you put the things into the things. Y'all are in college, you'll be able to figure that out, no problem. <laughs> uh, that is it. All right.